Betelgeuse has been dramatically dimming since September of 2019. At first, astronomers thought it would eventually return to normal brightness, but that hasn't happened yet. Instead, it's become even more faint. As of February 2020, Betelgeuse is just 38% of its normal brightness. And if that weren't weird enough, new images from ESO's Very Large Telescope show the star as it has never appeared before. Welcome back to Launchpad, I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. And yeah, Betelgeuse is just getting more and more weird. <laughs> to recap, it's been fading ever since it became visible once again in September 2019, and initially that wasn't really a huge surprise because Betelgeuse is a semi-variable star that fluctuates roughly every 420 days or so. But starting in November, it became much fainter than in previous cycles, and by the end of December it had lost nearly half of its normal brightness. Much of the work involving Betelgeuse has been based on directly measuring its brightness and seeing how it changes in comparison to nearby non-variable stars. This is a technique called photometry, and nowadays it can be done by anyone with a telescope and the right camera and software. What's a lot harder to do, however, is take a direct image of Betelgeuse. Even though it's relatively large on the sky, imaging the star requires ideal observing conditions, ultra-sensitive detectors, and sophisticated image processing. But in December, a team of astronomers led by Miguel Montarges of KU Leuven in Belgium managed to image Betelgeuse, and the result is incredible. I've got to admit, I've never seen anything like this. Some news articles are claiming that Betelgeuse has physically changed its shape, and while that certainly is possible, it's a little hard to conclude from just this press release image alone. However, it is clear that one part of the star is very bright while the other is really, really dim. Even better, Montargas' team just happened to image Betelgeuse in January of 2019. The result is a stunning before and after comparison. Both images were taken using the sphere image mounted on the 8-meter Very Large Telescope in Chile. It's hard to overstate just how difficult these observations are. It's like being able to resolve a quarter from 100 kilometers away. I love how these images show how radically Betelgeuse has changed over the course of just a year. It's clear that there's much less light coming from it in the December image. And that would, of course, explain the dimming. But it's not clear why Betelgeuse appears to be so strange in the first place. Like our Sun, Betelgeuse carries energy from its interior to its surface via convection. But supergiant stars like Betelgeuse are so large, the convection is very uneven. Remember, if Betelgeuse were placed at the center of our solar system, its outer edges would reach Jupiter's orbit. So while our Sun is covered evenly with millions of small convection cells, Betelgeuse's distended envelope is just a handful of gigantic blobs. It should look less like a star and more like an angry cloud. The outer layers are so far away from the star's interior that its gravitational pull on the surface is very weak. If enough energy gets convected up from the interior, a chunk of the surface can blow away, forming Betelgeuse's powerful stellar wind. If the gas in this wind is enriched with carbon, it could condense into dust. In fact, another team led by Pierre Carvella from the Observatory of Paris used the visor instrument, also on the Very Large Telescope, to reveal the dust environment surrounding Betelgeuse. The visor image was taken around the same time as the sphere image. Visor uses a disk to block out the star and its immediate surroundings, which are both bright and must be masked to allow the fainter dust plumes to be seen. The orange dot in the middle is the sphere image of Betelgeuse's surface, which, remember, reaches out to Jupiter's orbit. The dust cloud is formed by Betelgeuse's stellar wind. Is it possible that Betelgeuse is fading due to a clump of obscuring dust? Well, maybe, but that would imply it's somehow only obscuring half the star's surface. Perhaps a large clump of dust was expelled from the star's southern hemisphere, or maybe there's a clump of orbiting dust that just happens to be floating past. However, Ed Guinan of Villanova University and Rick Wasatonic have been monitoring Betelgeuse for the last 40 years using photometry. They were among the first to report on Betelgeuse's fading in a pair of astronomical telegrams in December. 
In a follow-up telegram on February 1st, Guinan reports that Betelgeuse has continued to fade since the December image was taken. Betelgeuse's nominal magnitude is around 0.5 in the middle of the visible part of the spectrum. We call this the V-band. By the end of December, it had fallen to about magnitude 1.5. Now Guinan and Wetzatonic report that the star may have faded further to magnitude 1.62. That would make it as faint as nearby Bellatrix in the constellation Orion. In other words, it appears that the star has lost at least two and a half times its original brightness since September. However, the star doesn't seem to be fading as rapidly as it did before, and it may in fact be leveling off. In a private communication, Guinan tells me that it's been holding relatively steady for the last week or so, and if that's the case, then it may, just may mind you, it may be approaching the end of its 420 day pulsation cycle, and we may start to see it brighten again before the end of winter. Or it may just continue to fade and confound us even more. Still, despite the headlines, there isn't any new evidence that Betelgeuse will go supernova anytime soon. I mean, sure, if its core became iron, it could go supernova tonight, but the reality is, is that it probably won't happen for another 100,000 years, despite my wishes that it would happen sooner, like tonight, while it's clear and I'm outside looking at it. Come on, Betelgeuse, owe me a solid. I discussed why in my last video on Betelgeuse, so make sure you check that out when we're done here. In the meantime, make sure you go outside tonight and take a look at Betelgeuse in the shoulder of Orion. It's remarkable how faint it's become. Now, if we could just figure out why. <laughs> Thanks once again to my patrons, especially Michael Dowling and Stephen J. Morgan for helping to make Launchpad Astronomy possible. If you'd like to help out for the price of a cup of coffee every month, make sure to check out my Patreon page. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this incredible universe of ours, please make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay curious, my friends.